how to create your own Pi VPN server on an Ubuntu Linux virtual private server. VPS. To set up our Pi VPN server, we'll need to create a virtual private server. The virtual private server we're going to be using for this video demonstration is called DigitalOcean. Once we have created our VPS, we'll then need to install a VPN client. Now Pi VPN comes with two VPN protocols that you can choose to install. The first protocol is called WireGuard, of which you'll need to install the WireGuard client. The second VPN protocol is called OpenVPN. And if you choose this protocol, you'll need to install OpenVPN Connect client. For this video demo, we're going to be installing the WireGuard protocol on our Pi VPN server, and therefore we won't need the OpenVPN Connect client as we'll just need the WireGuard client for the WireGuard protocol on Pi VPN. Next, we'll need to install an SSH client. This will allow us to log into our Pi VPN server using SSH. Once we're logged in, we'll need to install Pi VPN. We'll be using this Pi VPN installation script command to install and set up Pi VPN on our server. Once Pi VPN is up and running, we'll then check our IP address using whatismyipaddress.com. If we have set up and connected successfully to our Pi VPN server, our IP address should match our DigitalOcean droplet. Okay, let's start. So first, navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link for DigitalOcean. It will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below. As a new user to DigitalOcean, you'll need to either sign up using your email, GitHub account, or Google account. Now I have already created a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on sign in. Once you've signed into DigitalOcean, Ocean, you'll be taken to your project dashboard. Once here, click on create, then click on droplets to create a cloud server. We'll now need to configure our DigitalOcean droplet. First, start off by choosing a region. So for this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with London in the United Kingdom. Once you've picked your region, scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. Click on OS, click on Ubuntu, and then for the version, click on this drop down arrow and select the latest LTS version for Ubuntu, which at the time of recording of this video is 24.04. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. Next, we'll need to choose our droplet size. For the droplet type, click on shared CPU basic plan. Scroll down a bit more until you see CPU options. Click on regular, which has a disk type of SSD. The CPU option of regular will be more than enough for your Pi VPN server. Now you'll need to select a plan. Now, if you're just making a Pi VPN server for yourself, and all your devices and maybe some friends and family, then the $6 a month plan should be more than enough. If the VPN server is for more people, then maybe go with the $12 a month plan. I'm going to be going with the $6 a month plan, which gives me one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabytes SSD disk, and a terabyte of bandwidth. Next, scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Click on password and then create a root password for your droplet. Make sure your password meets all the password requirements. So I'm just going to create a root password now. Once you've done that, scroll all the way down until you see where it says host name. A host name gives your droplet an identifying name. So it's basically the name of your server. So I'm going to delete what's already pre-typed in here. And then I'm going to type pyvpn wireguard once you've chosen a name, click on Create Droplet. Now, while our droplet is being created, let's install the WireGuard client. So open up another tab. I'm just going to click on this tab and you're going to navigate to the following URL address, wireguard.com slash install. Once here, you'll need to choose the WireGuard client appropriate for your operating system. So you've got Windows, you've got Mac OS, Ubuntu, Android and iOS, Debian, and more if you scroll down. Now I'm on Windows, so I'll be dealing with the Windows installer. So I'm going to click on Download Windows Installer. Once you've done that, look at the top right of your browser and click on the wireguard-installer.exe. If you're on Windows, you'll be greeted with the user account control. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? If you want to install WireGuard, then you'll need to click on yes. WireGuard will then begin installing. It should be very fast as WireGuard is a very lightweight client. Once it has been installed, WireGuard will automatically open. Minimize it for the time being and we'll get back to it later. Next, we'll need to install our SSH client. Open up another tab. I'm just going to click on my other tab here and navigate to putty.org. Once you're here, click on download putty and then pick the installer relevant for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'll be going with the 64-bit Windows installer here. If your operating system isn't listed here, you'll need to download an alternative SSH client that's compatible with your OS. Now, I've already installed Putty, so I'm not going to be going through the installation process again. However, if you'd like a step-by-step -step video on how to install Putty, I'll put a link in this video description below to one of my videos, which will take you through the step-by-step -step process. I'll also put it as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video. Once you've installed your SSH client, go back to your digital OS project dashboard and check on the creation status of your droplet. And as you can see indicated by this green status symbol here, our droplet is now active and has been successfully created. We can now log into our VPS 
and install Pi VPN. So to log in, we'll need to copy our server's IP address, which in my case is 144.126.205.166. To the right hand side, click on copy to copy it to your clipboard, minimize your browser and find putty. As you can see, I've got a putty shortcut here on my desktop. If you don't have a putty shortcut, you'll need to search for it on your PC. Once you've found it, just open it. I'm going to double click on the shortcut to open up putty. Once putty has opened in the host name or IP address section, right click and click on paste to paste in your digital ocean droplets IP address. Once done, click on open. You'll then be greeted with the putty security alert, which informs you that the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now we know this is our digital ocean droplet that we've just created. So you have a couple of options. You can either click on cancel, connect once or accept. I'm going to click on accept as I would like to proceed with logging into my server. Maximize the putty terminal window. At the top left it says login as. We're going to be logging in as root so type the word root and then hit enter on your keyboard. For password this will be the root password that you created when you were setting up your digital ocean droplet. So I'm just going to type in my password and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. And as you can see we have now logged into our server. Open back up your browser, open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address pyvpn.io. Once you're here, look to where it says installation and copy this curl command by highlighting it and then right clicking on it and clicking on copy. Once you've copied the installation curl command, open back up putty, right click to paste and hit enter on your keyboard. PyVPN will then begin installing on your server. In your putty terminal window, you'll then be greeted with the Pi automated installer. It says this installer will transform your Raspberry Pi into an open VPN or WireGuard server. Now we're not installing Pi VPN on a Raspberry Pi. We are in fact installing it on our cloud server, also known as a virtual private server. So as you can see, OK is already highlighted, so simply just press enter on your keyboard. The Pi VPN is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function. In the next section, you can choose to use the current network settings, DHCP, or manually edit them. Now, of course, DigitalOcean gives us a static IPv4 address, so we do meet the criteria, so simply hit enter on your keyboard. IPv6 leak. Although this server doesn't seem to have a working IPv6 connection or IPv6 was disabled on purpose, it is still recommended that you force all IPv6 connections through the VPN. This will prevent the client from bypassing the tunnel and leaking its real IPv6 address to servers, though it might cause the client to have slow response when browsing the web on IPv6 networks. Do you want to force root in IPv6 to block the leakage? Of course we're going to go with yes, so just simply hit enter on your keyboard. ETHO is available. We're going to be sticking with ETHO, so simply press tab on your keyboard and hit enter. Since we think you are not using a Raspberry Pi OS, we'll not configure a static IP for you. This doesn't matter as we're using a digital Ocean server and the IP is static anyway. If you are in the Amazon, then you cannot configure a static IP anyway. Just ensure before this installer started, you had set an elastic IP on your instance. Just press enter on your keyboard. Choose a local user that will hold your OVPN configurations. Press enter on your keyboard. Choose a user. No non root user account was found. Please type a new username. We're currently on our root user. However, this Pi VPN installation script wants us to create a separate user, also known as a non root user. We're not going to be using this user that we create. However, the script for forces us to make one. So I'm just going to call my user Websplaining and then press tab once you've chosen a name for your user and hit enter on your keyboard. Password dialog, please enter the new user password. So we'll need to pick a password for this new user, which in my case is Websplaining. So I'm just going to type a password in here. Once you've chosen a password, press tab and then hit enter. We'll need to select that user. As you can see, it's already selected. Just press tab and then press enter on your keyboard for OK. Installation mode. WireGuard is a new kind of VPN that provides near instantaneous connection speed, high performance and modern cryptography. It is the recommended choice, especially if you use mobile devices where WireGuard is easier on battery than OpenVPN. OpenVPN is still available if you need the traditional flexible trusted VPN protocol or if you need features like TCP and custom search domain. Choose a VPN, press space to select. So currently the WireGuard VPN protocol is pre-selected. However, if you want the OpenVPN protocol, you can press space on your keyboard to select it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just simply going to press tab on my keyboard to highlight the word OK and press enter. The WireGuard VPN protocol will then begin installing on your Pi VPN server. Default WireGuard port. You can modify the default WireGuard port. Enter a new value or hit enter to retain the default. The default port is 51820. We're going to be sticking with that, so simply press tab on your keyboard and hit enter. Confirm custom port number. Are these settings correct? port 51820. If it is, just simply hit enter on your keyboard. DNS provider. Select the DNS provider for your VPN clients. Press space on your keyboard to select. To use your own, select custom. 
In case you have a local resolver running, i.e. unbound, select Pi VPN is local DNS. And make sure your resolver is listening on 10.124.123.1. Allow and request from 10.124.123.0 slash 24. You have the following DNS providers. Quad 9, OpenDNS, Level 13, DNS.watch, Norton and Family Shield. As you can see, Quad 9 is already pre-selected for you. I'm going to be rolling with this, so I'm simply going to press tab on my keyboard and hit enter. Public IP or DNS. Will clients use a public IP or DNS name to connect to your server? Press space to select. So I'm going to be going with the public IP, which in my case is my digital ocean server's IP. Press tab on your keyboard and hit enter. Server information. The server keys will now be generated. Press enter on your keyboard. Unattended upgrades. Since the server will have at least one port open to the internet, it is recommended you enable unattended upgrades. This feature will check daily for security packages, updates only, and apply them when necessary. It will not automatically reboot the server, so to fully apply some updates, you should periodically reboot. Press enter on your keyboard. Unattended upgrades. Do you want to enable unattended upgrades of security patches to the server? We're going to be going with yes, so just hit enter on your keyboard. Finally, you'll be greeted with installation complete. Now run PyVPN add to create the client profiles. Run PyVPN help to see what else you can do. If you run into any issue, please read all our documentation carefully. All complete posts or bug reports will be ignored or deleted. Thank you for using PyVPN. Hit enter on your keyboard. Reboot. It is strongly recommended you reboot after installation. Would you like to reboot now? No is already pre-selected, so we're going to go with that, just hit enter on your keyboard. Great, so now we can start creating clients. First, let's check out PyVPN help to see all the options we have. So type the following command, PyVPN space help. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. So the usage of this command, you simply type PyVPN space and then the command option. So if you wanted to create a client conf profile, you could simply type PyVPN space dash A or PyVPN space add. And here's a list of all the other commands you can use in this command line for your PyVPN server. For this video demo, we'll only be dealing with the add clients command and the QR code command. So let's add our first client to our PyVPN server. Type PyVPN space add. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. Enter a name for the client. So let's call our first client, client one and then hit enter on your keyboard. And there we go, our client keys have been generated, our client config has been generated, and we've updated our server config, and WireGuard was reloaded. Client1.conf has been successfully created. Client1.conf was copied to the following directory. So before we check out the .conf file, I just want to show you how you can see the QR code for this conf file. So for example, if I wanted to see the QR code for client1.conf, then I'd first need to type the following command, pyvpn space QR code. Once you've typed this in, hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then see a client list. Now of course we only have one client as that's the only client we have added in this video demonstration. Please enter the index slash name of the client to show. So I'm going to type client1 and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. And there's the QR code. So if you have installed a WireGuard client on a mobile device such as on iOS or Android, you'll need to open up the WireGuard client on that mobile device and scan the QR code using the WireGuard client app. You'll then be able to add the tunnel to your WireGuard client and connect. Now I'm on a PC, so I can't scan this QR code to connect to my PyVPN WireGuard server. So instead, what I'll need to do is copy my client's directory. So client1.conf was copied to the following directory. So I'm just going to copy everything from slash home to where it says slash configs, and I'll do that simply by highlighting the directory. Next, we'll need to type the following command, cd, which means change directory, space, and then right click to paste in the directory that holds our configs and then hit enter on your keyboard. And now we're in this directory. So now if we type the command ls, we'll be able to list the contents of this directory. So I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard. And as you can see, we have one file in this directory and that's client1.conf. So how do we get the configuration information from this conf file in this Ubuntu Linux terminal window? We'll need to type the following command. So type cat space, and then your client name. So my client is called client1.conf. So I'll type client1.conf. Once you've typed in the name of your client conf, hit enter on your keyboard. Under the cat command, you'll then see the WireGuard VPN connection information, which starts from interface and ends with allowed IPs. So highlight everything from interface and to the end of allowed IPs, which is zero slash zero. Once you've highlighted it, open up your WireGuard client, navigate to where it says add tunnel, 
and click on this arrow. Then click on add empty tunnel. Delete everything that's pre-typed in here. Right click and click on paste. We'll now need to give our new tunnel a name. So click on this text box here and I'm going to type Pi VPN. Once you've given it a name, click on save. All that's left to do now is to click on activate to connect to our Pi VPN server. Minimize the WireGuard client. And as you can see, we get a putty fatal error and that is because we have just connected to our WireGuard VPN. Just click on OK and you can close out of the putty terminal window as we no longer need it because we have already set up Pi VPN. Go back to your browser and open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address. What is my IP address.com? Hit enter on your keyboard, and then you should see your new masked IPv4 address, which in my case is 144.126.205.166. And as you can see, this is in London, England, United Kingdom. You also have the map location on the right here. And if we go back to our Digital Ocean project dashboard, you can see that our IP address 144.126.205.166 matches exactly the IP address displayed here, which means our original IP address is masked and we are protected. And that concludes the video on how to create your own Pi VPN server using an Ubuntu Linux virtual private server, VPS. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video.